Welcome to this Real Python Exercises course, where you'll practice using object-oriented programming in Python. Our Exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You'll also train reading other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. So in the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step-by-step step how I solved each of them. So you'll go through three steps for each task. You'll first learn about the exercise, you'll code your own solution, then you'll compare your solution and the process that got you there to mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That'll give you a chance to compare not just our final solutions, but also how we got there. This can help you gain some insight on the process of getting from a task description to a working solution in code. You'll start with solving some review exercises in the first section of this course and build up towards a challenge. In the second section, you'll continue to train creating classes in Python. The challenge in this course will be similar, but less based on what you did before. It'll give you a chance to revisit the fundamental OOP concepts on yet another example. Before starting this course, you should have watched the Python Basics course on object-oriented programming. If you went through that course, then you're well equipped to solve the tasks that you're about to encounter. The concepts that you'll practice are the difference between classes and instances, how to define a class, what class attributes are, what instance attributes are, how to create an instance method, and also how to create some special methods that are also called dunder methods, and finally also f-strings. If you're already somewhat familiar with these concepts, but you want to fortify your knowledge with practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. Before you get started, there is another tiny bit of background for this course, which is that I'll be using IDLE, the integrated development and learning environment that comes with Python. If you've gone through the Python basics courses, then you're already familiar with that tool. If not, and you want to know more, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. I'll use IDLE's interactive console that gives you direct access to the code defined in the Python file you executed. This makes it a bit more interactive when testing the code. But you don't need to use that feature, and you can replace it with print calls at the end of your file. So if you're just here to train, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding tasks. And that's all to get you set up. If you're ready to get started and do hands-on programming, then see you in the next lesson. There, I'll introduce you to the first exercise to get you warmed up. And I hope that you won't pass on either the review exercises or the challenges. So the first exercise is literally a review exercise from the associated Python Basics course. So at the end of the course, you ended up with a dog class that had this class attribute and a couple of instance attributes. And your first task is just going to be to recreate this basically, but without looking. So I want you to start from scratch, open up a new file, and then build this dog class again with the following specifications, that it should have one class attribute called species that has the value canis familiaris or canis familiaris, which is the Latin name for a dog. And then each instance of the dog class should have a name and an age. Also create a readable representation for a dog instance, which means that if you print one instance of the dog class, then it should give a nicely readable string. And finally, you should also create an instance method called dot speak that takes a sound as an argument and prints a sentence that the dog says the specific sound that you entered. So for example, it could look like this. Create an instance of dog that you're naming Philo here, and you're passing in a name and an age. And then you should be able to print philo and get out a string that says philo is 12 years old. And you should be able to call dot speak on the philo instance and pass it a string. And this, this is how dogs speak in German. So here it's saying wow. And then philo says wow. So that's the dog class you should model. It's the same class that you build in the Python Basics OOP course. So it's literally just redoing it, but redoing it from scratch. And that's still a great exercise. So before you move on to the next lesson, where I'll also build it out, do it yourself, start from scratch, open up a new file, and then build this doc class and make sure that it works as expected. See you in the next lesson. Here I am in a new file that I saved on my computer, and I called it doggo.py. I'm going to start by 
recapping the tasks that I basically have for this doc class. So I should build a doc class. I should create a class attribute called species. And then this was canis familiaris. Then another task was that each dog should have a name and age. Also, it should print nicely and should be able to speak a sound, right? So this should be some sort of argument that I can pass to the instance method. I think these are the tasks. Let's get started. So I'll start by building the dog class using the class keyword and then the name of the class, which I will use in cap case. So starting off with a capital letter. And if it would be more words like dog park, right, then you start the second word also with a capital letter that's called cap case. But this class is just called dog. And I'll add a pass keyword down here to say that I want to add some more information into the class. So that's my dog class without anything. But I do have a dog class. I'm going to get rid of this first comment. Next step, create a class attribute species canis familiaris. I will just copy this here and replace the pass keyword with species equals canis familiaris. If I put a variable right underneath the class, then it's part of the class. So then it becomes a class attribute and not specific to an instance of the class. So defining a variable like this makes it a class variable. I'm done with creating the class attribute for species. My next step is each dog should have a name and an age. Make sure that you keep your code indented to make it part of the dog class. And now I need to create the initializer method under init, which is going to run every time that I create a new instance of dog. I need to define this method. Def under init. And so this double underscores, right? Double underscores at the beginning, then init, and then another double underscores. And then I have to put something in here. And the first thing that you always need to pass in this instance methods is self. So I'll start off with self. What else do we need? We're going to need a name and an age. So creating a method signature that takes three parameters, self, name, and age, means that when I actually create an instance of dog, we're going to have to pass two attributes, name and age. And self is a reference to the instance itself, and that gets passed automatically. And then I'm just going to reassign this. I'm going to say self.name equals name. This line of code assigns whatever is passed in as an attribute for name to the instance attribute dot name. And then I'll do the same by saying self dot h equals h. And that should be it. So by defining the dunder in it in this way, what I say is that every dog instance that gets created has two arguments that you need to pass when you create an instance, otherwise it's going to fail. And these are name and h, and we'll assign them to the instance. Cool. Done with this little task. Next one is that it should print nicely. I'm going to use another dunder method, def dunder str. Self always the first one. And here I don't need to pass anything else because I will just access the instance attributes and then create a string and return that specific string. So that's going to be printed when I call print and pass it an instance of the dog class. Here I will return, let's use an F string, easier to format, self.name, so the name of that specific dog. And I will tell the user that the dog is self.h years old. So in that case, I get the name and the age of the dog, which are the two pieces of information that we have about the dog. And I think that's going to print nicely. And then we have a final task, which says that it should be able to speak a sound. I can pass that sound as an argument. So let me define another instance method. This is not going to be a special method like the other two. This is actually going to be a public method to that class. And I'm calling it speak. 
and it takes self and it also takes a sound. So again, self is the reference to the instance itself. You're not going to have to pass that because Python does that for you. But then it takes one argument. And then I want to, again, return an F string that gives the information of who it is, so the name of the dog. And then it says whatever sound you passed in. Note that here you don't use self.sound, right? Because this is not an instance attribute, but this is just an argument that you are passing to this method when you're calling it. And I think that should be it. Let's try it out. Press F5 to run the file. And it puts me into the interactive mode over here, which has the information of this file of the class that I defined. This is specific to idle. So if you're using a different editor, then just make sure to print it down here in the file before you run it. Here, I get the chance to play with it a bit. So I can create a dog. I'll call the dog Philo, Philo. And it's 12 years old. This is what I get returned. I get a dog object. Now I should be able to print. Oh, well, I should assign it to something, right? That'll make it easier. So I assigned the dog instance to the variable philo. And then I should be able to print philo. So this is going to call Danda str. And here you see the f string return philo. The name of the dog is 12 years old. So that's a nice representation. The other task was that I should be able to call dot speak on it and pass it a sound. Wow. There it is, my string. Philo says, wow. This is just a recreation of the dog class that you built in the Python Basics object-oriented programming course. And this is what we're going to start with, with the next review exercise. But it's always a good review exercise also to redo some code that you've already built before. Because if you start from scratch, there's always going to be a little bit of thinking involved. If you ended up with something that looks like this, then great job. This is the code that I'm going to continue working with in the next exercise as well. Let's get going and look at the next task.